running is bad for your knees. Okay, now listen here. Running is not bad for your knees. And you can see where the logic is though, right? Because um, your knees obviously are at the joint in the middle of your legs. And there's this concept, right, that you have axial load, right? And gravity does its work. Everybody has seen uh, grandma, right? And she might have been 5'2", back in 1990, right? And now here we sit 35 years later and she might be 4'11". Well, gravity does do its work. Um, it's a concept called desiccation. It's the drying out uh, mostly of the discs, right, uh, um, in our back. And so you lose some water content and the discs sit down on themselves and we get scrunched down a little bit, right? And so you can lose and um, um, height. Um, I mean, heck, I mean, my great grandmother was, I think, four eight, four nine, uh, when she passed away at the age of ninety six, right? Uh, but my nana was probably over five feet tall when she arrived here uh, from southern Italy um, in nineteen oh nine or nineteen ten, right? And so uh, um, the concept that gravity does its work, I think, has been sort of pervasive in the thought on what we're doing to our bodies uh, by running. And I say doing to our bodies because there's a certain segment of people out there that don't understand running. It's viewed as a largely quixotic pursuit. Um, they don't appreciate uh, 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 sort of what we as a running culture get out of it, both psychologically and physically. How could you possibly like that? And so I think that there's this element of trying to come up with good reasons to not do it. I'm going to come up with reasons to not move my body. I'm going to come up with reasons why it's healthier for me to sit in my mom's basement, gaming, licking orange Cheeto dust off of my fingers, and I'm going to feel better about me by explaining to you next to the water cooler on Monday morning why your 12-mile run is far more damaging to you than their sedentary lifestyle is um, as Cheeto dust liquors. All right? I'm here to tell you that it's not true. There's been some really, really good research done um, uh, uh, in prepping for this. I was actually reading um, some research that's, came out, that's come out of Northwestern University, um, Harvard University, studying the science of axial load on human joints. Here's what we know. Running, and if you think about it, it's actually quite intuitive if you think about it, because if you go into rehab and you have some sort of an imbalance or you have something that's hurting, many times when you go into rehab, what do they do? They give you rehab exercises, typically strengthening exercises, right? Strengthen your glutes, strengthen the muscles in your quadriceps or around your knees because you might have some patellar tendonitis or some other issue, right? Well, what we know is that running a lot or even a little, running strengthens the muscles that surround the knee, that are around the knee in uh, 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 sort of the lower quadriceps area and then um, around the bottom of the knee. And then what we know is that it actually buffers the knee against injury. Studies have shown that running actually reduces the risk of osteoarthritis. There not only is no causative um, long-term impact over large populations for osteoarthritis from running, but we know that running actually is largely preventative when it comes to early onset osteoarthritis. When you strengthen the muscles around a joint, we know that it can actually buffer the joint against injury. It can actually um, almost splint the joint and it can actually uh, uh, provide sort of scaffolding um, um, around the joint 
that will actually help strengthen the entire area to the degree that it reduces the risk of actual injuries to the joint itself, the joint capsule itself. Um, I'll never forget that um, to elucidate this point um, in some fashion, um, I had a friend uh, who played football um, in college and he went in, um, I'll never forget it. It was a homecoming game and we were playing Iowa State and he put his head down and uh, he broke his neck. But didn't realize that the neck was broken. And the reason why it didn't behave like that for a long time was that his neck muscles were so strong that it actually splinted, uh, believe it or not, his neck. And it's like, oh my God, you know, once we found out what was going on and the situation was obviously taken care of with an incredible amount of urgency. But the point is, is that increased musculature and ligamentous strength actually can strengthen a joint and actually buffer it against other injuries. Uh, um, in fact, in that case, it didn't buffer it against injury, but it kept it from being any worse than it needed to be. So when you look at the cartilage, people say, okay, well, what about the cartilage? What about the cartilage in your knees? It's interesting because studies now show that um, moderate to uh, uh, um, significant actual stress um, on certain structures in the body actually um, creates more resiliency and more strength. And so we've actually seen situations where cartilage can actually regrow itself and cartilage can actually be strengthened in the actual knee joint because of running, not in spite of running. Um, and it makes some sense because there's been an evolution too when you look at bony injuries. Obviously, the thought process used to be when it comes to bone injuries, specifically stress fractures, is non-weight bearing. Don't put any weight on it. Simply let the bone heal before you do anything. We now know that uh, moderately applied stress actually can help it heal, right? So now we have things like these Alter G treadmills and oh my goodness, those things, I, I think they're uh, a quarter of a million bucks, maybe sometimes even 300,000, maybe a half a million bucks, some of these super advanced Alter G treadmills where they can offload some of your weight. So we now know people who have had foot fractures, uh, femoral stress fractures, femoral stress injuries, tibial fibula in the in the lower leg, um, uh, bony stress injuries, that instead of doing completely offloading, right? Conventional wisdom was get in the pool. Don't touch your foot to anything. Don't apply any stretch. It's going to keep the bone from healing. Well, we now know that if you apply a little tiny bit of stress to a healing fracture, it will actually stimulate bone growth and it will actually help it heal faster. That's the reason why you have bone stimulators, right, that some orthopedic surgeons might um, insert or inter, uh, uh, to actually help stimulate bone growth because we now know that applying some sort of stress or some sort of stimulus to a fracture site can actually help it grow back. You need to make sure that you consult your physician, obviously, um, on this and make sure that what you're doing is in keeping with what they want to do because you could have a displaced fracture, you could have a stress reaction, you could have a uh, a stress fracture. And so there's different kind of bony injuries, but we know, generally speaking, that across the board, completely never applying any stress to the bone generally is not accepted anymore as uh, the way to proceed. So if you run into those kinds of problems, consult your doctor, uh, but just laying around in your, uh, um, in your recliner um, watching uh, your favorite team lose to somebody on Sunday probably isn't the best way to heal a bone uh, um, anymore.